Good morning students. Today we shall begin with a new chapter. After we have already finished our first terminal examinations. I hope all of you are fine. So we shall begin with our new syllabus. That is the first chapter is the Narayanpur incident. So this is an extract from the Narayanpur incident by Shashi Deshpande. So you will get in your textbook regarding the author. Shashi Deshpande is an award-winning Indian novelist. She published her first collection of short stories in 1978 and her first novel, The Dark Holes, No Terrors, in 1980. She has also published four books for children. Deshpande is known for writing about the problems faced by ordinary Indians. So you will find basically that the author is a very well-known Indian author and she writes basically on the ordinary citizens of India. So in this lesson also, we will be learning about the pre-independence era when the British were ruling over India and uh, the people of India were fighting for freedom. So it will be, it is set on 8 August 1942. So five years before we got the independence, okay? So the Quit India movement begins so you'll find here small children being involved in the independence movement started in our country. Babu and Manju suddenly find themselves part of all this when their schools close down and their father is put behind bars. The situation is almost similar like ours because here also we'll see in our lives also at these present times we are all at home because our schools have been closed down not because of freedom movement but because of the pandemic which has been caused by coronavirus so here you will see the father has already been jailed because he was fighting for the freedom of our country and their brother mohan also gets involved in this freedom movement so you will see basically babu and manju are very small children maybe uh, of your age or maybe little elder than you but uh, you will see the father is already in the jail and the brother is involved in the movement. Now the, this Quit India movement was started by the Indians against the British forcing them to leave India. So, but now the brother Mohan becomes involved in the movement and the rest of the fam family moves to the small town of Narayanpur. But now Mohan has turned up in Narayanpur and it was friend Suman and the Quit India movement has gained momentum. Now the speed of the movement has increased. Now people are taking par part in it more and more. So you'll find here Mohan along with his friend has again come back to Narayanpur to participate in the Quit India movement. Babu decides to watch the procession that Mohan is taking part in and takes Manju with him. The mother does not know about the plan, so the children leave the key to their house with the neighbor Ramabai. Okay, so read on to find out what happens. So you will have to read the lesson along with me in order to have a better understanding of the lesson. You will see the mother is not at all aware of what the children are pl planning to do. Here the children, uh, Mohan, that is the elder brother, he, he is going to take part in a procession and Babu is going to watch that procession in which his brother will take part along with his sister Manju. So mother was not at, ha at home when they were planning all this. So they decided to give the key to one of their neighbor and the neighbor's name was Ramabai. Now say Manju impatiently tell me where we are going to watch a procession. Walk fast we may be let. Okay, so the answer is. To watch a procession. What procession? Whose procession? Where? You sound like Ramabai, said Bamu, Babu. Did she give you a quick lesson? Babu is very angry because Manju is asking unnecessary questions and so he compares her with Ramabai, their neighbor, who often asks questions. You so Oh, be quiet about Ramabai. Tell me, Babu, what procession? The college students are taking out a procession from the college to the collector's office. Mohan told me we could watch. He says it's going to be peaceful. Okay, so the college students, what they are planning to take out a procession and it will be a very peaceful procession. And that's why Babu is also interested to go and watch that procession because it is not going to be a violent one. 
There were already some people lining the roads. Manju and Babu found a good spot almost opposite the gate of the collector's compound. They had to wait for some time. Okay, so basically where the students are going, they are going to the collector's office to maybe submit a, sub, a memorandum. Okay, some suggestions or maybe some protests they are going to do uh, in the collector's office. So what happened? Manju and Babu, they decided to be on the other side of the opposite side of the collector's office and quietly watch the procession. There were already some people lining the roads. Manju and Babu found a good spot almost opposite the gate of the collector's compound. They had to wait for some time. Soon they heard the magical words, they're coming, they're coming. The children, like the others, rushed out. Policemen appeared all along the road. Some of them walked in front, in front of the students, some by their sides, but the students marched as if the police did not exist. Okay, so the students, they were peacefully marching and the, and the police have appeared all over the road. The students did their own work that is they went on a peaceful protest without looking at a policeman and they pretended as if the police did not exist at all for them but the students marched as if the police did not exist they walked in complete silence there were no slogans no shouts just a shuffle of feet and a low murmur from the watching crowd so you'll see basically uh, naturally when uh, what uh, protests happen what happens there is loud noise and all chaotic condition uh, situation all over the place but here you will see in this lesson the students the college students were taking out a protest a very peaceful protest and hence only the sounds of the feet and some kinds of murmurs in the crowd could be heard babu and manju looked eagerly for Paj mohan Yes, there he was dressed in white pajamas and a cream-colored kurta. Okay, so here they don't know the other people who were involved in the procession, but they knew the brother. So their eyes were all on their brother who was also in the prote protest. So he was coming wearing a pajama, white pajama and a cream-colored kurta with another boy, both holding aloft the picture of Mahatma. Okay, they were not making any noise, but in their hands there was a picture of Mahatma Gandhi. The arms must have edged holding it up that way for so long, but the faces were expressionless. Maybe the hands were painting, but they did not show it that anything was painful in them. So they were doing it with utmost patriotism in their hearts. Now the leaders of the procession had reached the barred gates. A police officer, he was the DSP, Mohan told them later, came up to them. There was some conversation between him and the students. The students seemed to be arguing. Then one of them handed him a piece of paper. He took it without glancing it at it and nodded. The students, okay, so what happened? Uh, one DSP came and uh, he, he had some conversation with the students regarding why the procession was going on. So he took the paper without even looking at it. He, he was such an arrogant fellow. So the students turned their backs to him and one of them shouted, Mahatma Gandhi ki jay. With the response of the DSP, the students were not happy. And hence, they, the students shouted in unison. Okay, In one voice, they shouted, Mahatma Gandhi ki jay. Jay, the others shouted back loudly. And then they briskly marched back the way they had come. Is that all? Asked Manju in disappointment. Manju was thinking, she would be able to see some other wonderful side but she was very much disappointed because only this one we have come to watch or what he asked she asked her brother babu what else did you want a dance a drama babu asked scornfully babu was very because manju was a very small girl she did not understand all this okay that's why out of ignorance she was saying like that and babu became so angry and she asked and he asked why you wanted a dance or a drama in this protest Nevertheless, he understood a feeling and asked Mohan the same questions when he returned home. Why did you go back so quietly? Were you scared of what the people would do? Okay, so he understood a feeling and asked Mohan the same question when he returned home. Why did you go back so quietly? Were you scared of what the police would say? Okay, so Babu asked his brother when he came back home. Why you people were protesting so silently? Were you scared of the police that they were going to beat you? Mohan seemed immensely pleased with himself. Scared? We had planned it this way. No, we were not scared at all. In fact, we have planned to do it in this way. That is peaceful protest. We knew they expected us to be pro 
protest and violent. Oh yes, they wanted us to do that so they could beat us up and hold us, hold us away to jail but we were not prepared to go to jail. So when we do violent protests, what they will do? There is a chance the police will catch up and put us in jail but we don't want. We want a peaceful protest so that we will not be put into a jail. It's like a declaration of war. We told them now this war is for is is and for us you are the enemy so the enemy is the british people who are ruling india and the war is going to be waged by the indians okay the and what was the paper you gave the policeman oh that person noticed we served on the collector as a representative of his majesty's government majesty's government here you will see at a time in, uh, in, in uh, england was ruled by queen victoria or elizabeth uh, you will find it very clearly if you search during these times you can google and search who so that person who was ruling over england was known as majesty and that government was ruling in india indirectly ruling in india through uh, some british people some officers asking them to quit india or face the consequences so what was the ultimatum given to the collector it was given that either you people should leave india or else you have to face the consequences consequences means the result will be very bad if you don't leave india suman and another boy turned up after they had finished the dinner and that night the boy staggered in with a large newspaper covered parcel in his hands here let me help you said mohan my room okay ama no i think the puja room is better so some boy suman and another boy came up with a parcel those days everything was done secretly because they were spies there were people who were keeping a watch on the Indians anytime because uh, the British did not want to leave India and they want to rule over the Indians. That is why they, many uh, people they have employed to look at the activities of what was going on. So they brought one parcel and so Mohan asked his mother, Amma, shall I keep it, uh, keep it in his room? Then Amma said that no, you keep it in the puja room, there people will not find it out. A light there will look more normal. Right as usual, Amma, the puja room then. The boy went away after a whispered conversation with Suman. Then Suman, Amma and Mohan went into the small puja room. Babu and Manju stared curiously over their shoulders at the mysterious parcel which turned out to be a cyclo styling machine. So what was it? That parcel was a cyclo styling machine. Babu said Mohan as they settled down to work. Sit out in the front room and keep a watch. Keep Give us a warning if anyone seems to be coming to our house. Manju, go to bed. Or else he went on, noticing her crestfallen face. You sit here in the hole and pass on Babu's warning to us. So, what was the job assigned to Babu? That he will sit in the, in the outside. And if anyone is coming, then he will pass the information to them. And what was the work which was assigned to Manju? Manju was there. He... She, she was already very sleepy, so they told her to sleep. But in case she does not, does not want to sleep, then she can sit outside and she can pass the message to Babu. And Babu will mess, pass the message to them whether anyone is coming to inquire about them or not. Amma, Suman and Mohan got to work at once. Manju peered at them from the hole. In a little while, she began to feel drowsy and had to struggle not to doze off. Manju was so sleepy that she had to control herself. Babu sat outside, alert and attentive. He felt the thickening in his throat. It was beginning, and at last he was doing something. Suddenly he tensed. A man riding a bike of his... Uh, he was getting off. Uh, Babu sat outside, alert and attentive. He felt the thickening in his throat. It was beginning, and at last he was doing something. Suddenly he tensed. A man riding a bike stopped right outside the gate. Yes, he was getting off. He was opening the gate. Babu flung himself inside. Manju turned a startled face to him. So, they were already in for some danger when they found that a person had came, had come in a bike to inquire about them. So, Babu had already passed the message to Mohan. When Mohan and Manju was also very scared. Someone's coming in. There was a silence. From inside the puja room, three faces look at him. So you will see three faces means uh, this one, Sam, Suman, Mohan and Amma. There was silence from inside the puja room. Three faces look at him. 
Then Amma got up and came out, followed by Mohan. Suman stayed inside and Mohan closed the door of the room. So Amma came up and Suman and Mohan closed the door of the of the room. Manju to bed, Babu you too. Okay, so they told Babu and Manju to go to bed. There was knock on the door. Babu rushed to his room, unrolled his bed roll and threw himself on it. Who's there? Rama called. Mohan go and see who is it. Manju had gone into her bed to notice the door. Amma's voice was steady. Her hands were trembled. So Amma was very scared. So she was steady. She was composing herself, controlling herself. Still she was fearing. And there, was, there was fear in her mind. Who's there? Amma called. Mohan. Mohan came in saying, Amma, it's Patil, the sub-inspector. So who came in the bike? It was uh, a person by the name Mr. Patil, who was the sub-inspector. I haven't come to trouble you, a strange voice said. Your husband was my friend in school. I'm a friend. So I'm not coming here to arrest you or to trouble you. In fact, I've come here because I'm your family friend. Your husband was my uh, school friend. Amma got up quickly and went out. Manju waited a moment and followed her. There was Babu coming out of his room, making a show of having woken up out of a deep sleep. So everyone was pretending. No one was sleeping, right? But everyone pretended as if they were sleeping or busy in some other work because they did not want to show that there was a cyclo styling machine at their home. So it was used for Xeroxing, copies of um, different, what to say, uh, to Xerox, a kind of Xerox machine, okay, we can say. Uh, the man was saying to Amma, yes, we were in school together. Oh, he was. Please, Patil Sahab, said Amma rather impatiently. Tell me why you are here. It's like this. There's going to be search of your house. Okay, so he's saying we got an information that something is there in this house. So there is going to be a search. So that is the reason why I came here to inform you. Most probably tonight I heard the Sahabs talking. So, okay, the Sahab means the British people. The British officers, they were known as Sahabs. So they were talking. They were speaking of a cyclo styling machine. Uh, it seems you people are making copies of the Mahatma speech. They say you have people hiding here as well. So uh, we heard that uh, you people are making copies of Gandhiji's speech. And that's the reason why they are going to search. If, if you are found with that, then you may, might be arrested. So I came in advance to inform you about it. Ha, huh, Mohan scoffed. But you have the cyclo styling machine. No, said Mohan angrily. You're wasting your time spying on us, okay? No, we don't have the cyclo styling machine. Who said? Mohan said. You're simply wasting your time. It's better you go from here. Tell me, the man ignored Mohan and spoke to Amma. Yes, Amma, replied simply and Mohan made an angry hissing sound. So Amma was very scared. So she said that, no, yes, we have the cyclo styling machine with us. Where is it? Inside. Give it to me. I will get it out of the way. Mohan burst out again. Amma, what are you doing? How can you trust a policeman? So Mohan was quite angry and he said, How can you trust a person who is coming home for the first time simply because he says that he is our father's friend? So we can't trust people like that. The man touched Mohan on the shoulder. Mohan, you are still very young. I'm a policeman, yes. But your father was and still is my friend. And this is my country as much as it is yours. Now give it to me quickly. Amma opened the door of the puja room and said, Suman. Suman emerged, looking anxiously at them. Amma smiled at her and said, You have to get away, take away all the material. Mohan, will you? Okay, so Amma said, No, 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 please give him. It's better we don't invite any kind of trouble because your father is also already in the jail. And it will be, if any one of us is to go to jail, then it will be a big problem for all of us. That is the reason why Amma decided to give away the cyclo styling machine to um, Mr. Patil, okay, the sub-inspector. Mohan ducked into the puja room and locked the machine and gave it to Patil. Do you have a largish base? The man asked, if you have a largish means large bag. Manju, Amma began, but Babu had already got it and they were gone. Patil, Mohan and Suman, the house seemed unbelievably quiet after the earlier activity. Let's go to bed, Amma suggested. Mohan came back shortly. Suman, Manju asked him anxiously. She's all right. Go to bed, Manju, Amma said. Bad. With the people about to come, it, with the police about to come, it was impossible. But nevertheless, did, she did drop off and came out of her sleep to hear a loud knock at the door. It was repeated. Manju sat up in fright. Sudden fright. Who is it? Amma called. Opened the door. A strange voice ordered. Mohan, see who is it? Said Amma. 
It was like going through something all over again. By this time, they knew for sure that it wasn't a friend standing outside. No need for Mohan to announce Amma is police. Okay, so when Patil Sahab came and he took away the cyclo styling machine and he went away. Uh, and after that, all of them slept. But after some time again, they heard a knock on the door. And this time, they knew that it was not a Patil Sahab or any anyone else. But it was, uh, it was the police, of course. But they will be safe because... Uh, Patil has already taken away the cyclostelling machine from them and in this way maybe they escaped so we we do not know whether the informer was Patil or was he a friend or an enemy we are not sure but uh, anyway it was a, a kind of blessing only because they could escape arrest because the machine had already been taken away from them so students I request you to read the lesson uh, three four times because it's a uh, for your understanding if you read three four times and try to make as many questions as possible by yourself i will be sending you some questions which we, you have to do it by yourself so i i think for your improvement you need to put more effort read it by yourself and make question and answers by yourself so this was the end of the lesson so you will see here how they escaped arrest so we can't say whether Patil Sahab was a savior or an enemy. We do not know. But anyway, the, if you see at the end of the lesson, it was like he had helped them from being arrested. So thank you students.